Do me a favor. We believe in honor here at Journey Church. Would y'all stand to your feet really quickly, put your hands together, and welcome the preacher today, Pastor Liz. Can we give it up for Pastor JJ right quick? You guys can take a seat. I, Pastor JJ is always up here talking so good about me, so I have to take a, just a quick moment to let you know about him. What you guys don't know is, you know, when you live with somebody, you really know them. And so I really know him, and I could tell you that as fire as his sermons are, the best sermons that he preached are the sermons he preaches during the week with his life. Um, he practices what he preaches. I especially love that during our Love, Sex, and Marriage series because whenever he preaches something, he knows he needs to practice it. So our marriage, every <laughs> Love, Sex, and Marriage series goes to a whole nother level. He's washing more dishes. He's sweeping more. He just, he's the real deal, and you really need to know that about your pastor. Um, I brag about him, yes. I get to brag about him on social media, but I'm just excited that I get to do that here today. Um, also, a question that I get a lot, it's so random, but the, que the, the, the most asked question I get about Pastor JJ is they always ask me, the stories that he shares on Sundays, are they really true? Like, are they real? And so the answer is, so he blows me up every week. He blowed me up last week about, about my workout playlist. And so here's a blow up for him. Yes and no, okay? Yes, the stories are true. But no, they're not always completely accurate. So like last week, he was talking about Starbucks coffee being seven bucks in the first service. And I was like, babe, there's no star seven dollars? Starbucks coffee is not seven dollars. But see, he's not really lying. It's just in his mind. He just has a really big imagination. It's his mind. That's how he remembers everything. And I guess it kind of works because it kind of just gives us a great illustration because he's so good at that whenever he preaches. And so speaking about stories, do you guys want to hear a story? I'm starting, by the way. Do you guys want to hear? I'm getting somewhere. <laughs> do you guys want to hear a story about how I almost died like three months ago? If yes, say amen. I'm, I'm going to need some interaction here. I don't get up here often. Yes, thank you. <laughs> the fam you, know, you know the families in the front. They're the loudest ones. And they're Puerto Ricans. So that just raises the, the, the loudness level to another level. So anyways, getting to the point. So a couple months ago, I was homeschooling my kids. If y'all don't know, I homeschool my kids. But I was like OG homeschool. Like before the pandemic, I've been homeschooling since like back then. So I'm doing math with my third grade child. And so we're doing math and all of a sudden I feel like my body starts to itch like crazy. And I'm like, babe, I'm itching. He's like, maybe you're stressed. I'm like, I don't know, maybe because third grade math, y'all. I mean, I'm like, I don't remember learning this stuff. And he asks me all the time. And I'm like, just read the book. I don't know. Just, okay, just read the book. And so I start itching. And I thought it was just because I was stressed. Because he was like, maybe you're stressed. But after a while, like, my whole body started itching, like, everywhere, down to the bottom of my feet, y'all. It was getting really bad. And so I thought, well, sometimes I get allergies. Maybe I touch something. So I ran upstairs. And I'm like, I just need to take a shower to take this off. Well, while I'm in the shower, my body just, I start getting these bumps all over my body. I looked like, I don't know if you guys remember that movie with Will Smith. What was it called? Hitch. Hitch. Yes. My face, I'm not even lying, looked just like that. Like, it was that bad. I wish I would have taken a picture because I don't care. I would have showed y'all so you could see how bad it was. And then I called my husband right away. I'm like, babe, can you tell me? what I'm supposed to do, I've never experienced this before. And so he did what we all do, he started Googling it. And so he looked at his phone, what do you do when you have an allergic reaction? He's like, well, you need to get out of that hot shower. That's one thing, because you're not supposed to be in a hot shower. But I didn't listen to him because my mind was just such in a hurry to get rid of whatever was going on with me. And my, my, my scalp started to itch, it was so bad. So I'm like, I'm not getting out of here until I get this off of my body. I started washing my hair. And then as soon as I got out of the shower, I went into my medicine cabinet and I'm trying to find something to take. I started taking medication that I thought would fix it. It wasn't, I just I was running frantic in the house. And finally, and, and it got so bad that the welts that I was getting on my body started going into my throat. And then I was having trouble breathing. I started wheezing, and I'm like, oh my God, I need to go to the emergency room. And finally, my husband grabbed me, and he was like, look, you need to slow down. Calm down, because if you don't slow down, this is not going to get any better. So finally, 
I slowed down, I laid down on the bed, and then I was able to relax. Even though I was having trouble breathing, I remembered that my mom went through the same situation. And I'm like, I need to call her. Also because her initials are CVS, but my husband calls her that because she also is the kind of person that knows all the medications <laughs> you need to take. <laughs> Whenever, poor thing, she's had so many ailments, but she knows the medications. She's like, baby, you just need to take like three Benadryl and you'll be good. I'm like, okay. So I had already taken some other medication. I didn't want to overdose and die that way. So I went ahead and took like two Benadryl. And then I was able to calm down and I was okay. And so I found out, long story short, that I had an allergic reaction to shellfish. I didn't know, I've been eating shellfish all my life. I didn't know that as an adult, you can just all of a sudden develop a reaction to it. So I did, got tests, all that. The point I'm trying to make here today is that it wasn't until I slowed down that I was able to quell my fears, that I was able to calm down, make right decisions. Y'all, I would have gone to the emergency room. I don't have emergency room kind of money. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? When you go to the emergency room and you think that, oh, I'm good, and you come home and a month later you have like a $3,000 bill. That's happened to me before. And I don't have that kind of money. And so thank God I didn't do that, but it wasn't until I slowed down that I was able to assess the situation and make right decisions. I grew up in the 90s, and we used to have this saying when everyone was like, yeah, 90s baby, Whenever, and when anyone was like going out of control or just moving too fast, we used to say, slow your roll. Well, the title of today's talk is Slow Your Soul. <laughs> so do you ever feel like, and this is me, I'm just describing me, by the way, do you ever feel like you're in a constant state of hurry? Like, you always have like the longest to-do list. You have, you have so much to do and you feel like no matter how many items you knock off that to-do list, like the list just gets longer. Or you feel like you're constantly behind schedule, like no matter what you do, you're behind schedule, you're not getting everything done. And so you hustle, 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 work. And then by the time you get home to your kids or to your family or to whoever you have at home, your dog, I don't know, you feel like you have nothing to give to them. I constantly feel that way, and I know when Pastor JJ asked me to preach, I felt like during the time that he asked me, that's what God was speaking to me, that this is something I needed to work on. I didn't realize it was a problem. To me, I thought it was a good thing. I'm always on the go. I'm always doing something. And so it wasn't until I decided, all right, I need to figure out what's going on. Like, what is the problem? So I actually looked it up, y'all. It is an actual sickness. It's called hurry sickness. I am not lying. I'm not making this up. When you go home, you can Google it. Um, and there will be some good sites, some reputable sites that will tell you about this. And this is what psychologists say. It's a behavior pattern categorized by continual rushing and anxiousness. When a person constantly feels short of time and so tends to perform every task faster and to get upset when they encounter any kind of delay. Do any of y'all feel that way sometimes? Yes. And if you think that you do not suffer from this, I have a list of things that people who have hurry sickness do. And I want you to self-diagnose yourself. No judgment, you don't have to raise your hand or whatever. If you wanna amen, that's fine. But I have a list, I'm gonna go through this list. And if this is you, if you answer yes to any of these questions, you have hurry sickness. The first one is you are at the grocery store and you move from one checkout line to another because one line has less people. Does anybody do that? I feel like I do that all the time. Like, I'm always like, all right, it's like a race, like an invisible race. Like, who's get, like, there's a mom with three kids. I see who gets out of this first. And then if I lose, I'm like, dang, man. For what? Like, you're not, you're not winning anything. The second one is when you come to a stoplight, you count the cars ahead of you and change lanes to the shortest one. Whoever does that? How about when you change lanes to the shortest one has like one car and then that person is like slower than the one that had like 10 cars. Oh my gosh, isn't that frustrating? Yes. I'm preaching already. The third one, you multitask to the point you forget one of the tasks. Oh my, one time, I think I was texting Pastor Joey and yelling at one of my kids at the same time, and I texted him the thing I was yelling to my kids. He's like, what? I'm like, my bad, multitasking. The next one, you interrupt or talk over people. Who does that? Don't do that when you're arguing, y'all, especially with your spouse, I'm just saying. The last one, you press on the closed door button in the elevator repeatedly, like if it's going to make the elevator door close faster, right? It's just a light, y'all. You press it once, I don't know, there's like electricity that goes through and that's it. Like pressing it again, it's not gonna do anything. And why do we do this? Because we're all busy. All of us are busy. Moms, dads, brothers, sisters, students. Even my kids are busy. The other day I'm like, I told my oldest, can you help me wash the dishes? He's like, no mom, I'm sorry, I'm busy. I'm like, what? 
<laughs> it's serious. And then we think that we one day will not be busy, right? Okay, so for students, we're like, when I graduate, well, let me tell you right now, those who just recently graduated, you're still going to be busy. Yeah. Or you think that when I get a better job or when I get married, because then we can share the load. Nobody thinks that when they have kids, they're not going to be busy. Let's be real. But you do think, oh, when they get out of diapers, or when they go to school or whatever, or when they graduate college, you think that it's going to stop. You think you're going to stop being busy, and you're not. And the thing is, I think that the reason why we don't stop, too, is because it's something that's celebrated in our society. We think, you know what? If I'm busy, that means I'm doing something with that, my life, and I'm not being lazy. We actually put another word to it to make us feel better about it. We call it hustling. We say, all right, well, I'm hustling, so I'm doing something with my life. And to prove that we think this way, Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla, tweeted this recently, and it got 5 million likes and over 200,000 retweets. He said, working 16 hours a day, seven days a week, 52 weeks in a year, and people still call me lucky. And everyone celebrated that tweet. And I'm here to tell you today that it's not something that's good. I wrote it this way, if the devil can't make you sin, he'll make you busy. If he can't break up your family by getting you to cheat on your spouse, he'll break up your family by getting you to take another day at the office. If he can't destroy your health by getting you into drugs and alcohol, he'll destroy it by getting you staying up all night with anxiety because you're just thinking about all the things that you have to do the next day. Yeah. Carl Jung, this is a famous psychiatrist if you don't know this, his work built the premise for the Myers-Briggs personality test, the one that tells you if like, you're an introvert, extrovert. I think I'm like in between. I don't even know what that means. But he's a psychiatrist, and he wrote this. Hurry is not of the devil. It is the devil. Oh, that's good. Come on, that's and the good. Bible will support this statement as well. John 10.10 10 says the, key, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And if you take a second to think about it, hurry does the same thing. It steals our love. It kills our joy, and it destroys our peace. Think about how many relationships that you did not have the time to invest in, people that you love because you were such in a hurry. Or think it kills your joy. Think about all the vacations that you went on that you couldn't enjoy. You were physically there, but your mind was just thinking about all the work you had to do whenever you go back home. And it destroys your peace. Think about how many hours you've been sleep deprived because you're up all night with anxiety. And at this point in the sermon, you're like, okay, I get it, Pastor Liz. We need to not be in a hurry. We gotta slow down. We need to stop. And that is the solution, actually. Slow down. <laughs> but the thing is, nobody wants to be slow. Slow is considered something bad, right? It's like, if you don't like the service at a restaurant, you say, the restaurant had slow service. If you don't like a movie because you think it's boring, you say, that movie was slow. Nobody wants a slow car. Nobody picks a person who's slow running around on their basketball team, right? You never get a con you never win a contest for slow. There's no slow eating contest, whatever. Nobody wants to be slow. <laughs> and the thing is, the Bible is an upside down kingdom. Whenever society tells us to do one thing, the Bible actually tells us to do the opposite. So I'm going to give you four ways you can slow down if you're taking notes. The first one is schedule a Sabbath. Schedule a Sabbath. Exodus 20, 8 through 11 says, observe the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. Work six days and do everything you need to do. But the seventh day is Sabbath to your God. Don't do any work. And not only do, not you, nor you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your servant, nor your maid, nor your animals, not even the foreign guests visiting in your town. God is serious about it. For in six days God made heaven, earth, and sea, and everything in them. He rested. Let's say rested. Rested. On the seventh day. Therefore God blessed the Sabbath day. He set it apart as a holy day. So for those of you who are new to church, Sabbath just means a day of rest. And God was so serious about it, he made it a commandment, y'all. Like, don't kill, don't steal, take a day off. Like, he was that serious about it. For us, it's family day. We have family day on Fridays. We have date night on Monday nights. For you, it could be Sunday. Come to church. Serve. Serving is not considered work, by the way, just in case you're wondering. You're like, she's telling us to work. 
Serving is not. Go home with your family. Have a day of rest. And it's not just about resting, but it's, on, it's about reflecting on him and the blessings that God gave you. See, I love this Bible verse because it gives us a model. He worked for, seven day, for six days, and then on the last day he enjoyed everything that he worked for, everything that he built. And you might be here and you say to yourself, well, I don't have anything to enjoy, so that's why I don't slow down. That's why I don't take a Sabbath. That's why I have to hustle. That's why I have to keep it moving. Well, I'm here to tell you that you have everything you need, just sometimes you don't slow down enough so that you can see it. Wow. Let me give you an example. For those of you who know me, you know I love thrift stores. Like, Goodwill is my jam. So like a lot of moms, they love Target. No. I don't like paying full price. Goodwill. <laughs> this shirt is for Goodwill. That shirt that Pastor JJ's wearing, it looks like Burberry, right? No, girl. Four dollars, Goodwill. <laughs> like, I'm getting more applause for that. It's so serious. I love me some Goodwill. People text me all the time where they send me DMs when they see me post about the stuff I buy at Goodwill. They're like, wow, I don't find it. The other day I found some Jordans for like 20 bucks. They're worth like 100 and something dollars. How do you do it, Pastor Liz? And I, and I always ask them, how long did you really spend in the store though? Because you cannot go in Goodwill for like five minutes. It's not like Target or the grocery store, like in and out. It doesn't work that way. You have to like... Dig through the garbage. I mean, it's true. I took my son there one time and he's like, what is this place? My kids are traumatized, by the way. They will not come to me with, go come with me to go, well, you guys, Pastor JJ. Because they're like, they always tell me, 10 minutes, mom. I'm like, mm -hmm, 10 minutes. Go, I'll put the TV on in the car. And they just, they hate it. The reason why I bring this up is sometimes you have to slow down so that you can really see what's, it, what's actually there. You need to just take your time and slow down. So maybe it's not that your spouse sucks. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> maybe it's that you don't slow down enough and take the time to spend time with them. Or maybe your kids are not so bad. Maybe you don't take time with them. I know for us, when we, I know some of you who are, who are new to Journey don't know this, but we lost our third child, our son. And so when we lost him, I remember that we really slowed down. And it was at that moment that I really appreciated the other two that I had because I lost a child. And so that's how it is. You have to slow down. Maybe your single life isn't as bad as it seems. Maybe you're just not slowing down enough so that you can enjoy. You got to enjoy every season of your life. And that's why God tells us he wants us to take a Sabbath and slow down. I wrote it like this. Slowing down doesn't just help you enjoy life more. It also helps you do more with your life. You know the most productive countries in the world are Germany and France? I found out about this this week, and it blew my mind. These countries mandate, mandate 30 days of vacation once a year. And they're the most productive countries in the world. In case you're wondering, America is rated third, and only 25% of us actually take our full vacation time. That means that we can do more with less, because less is more. And that's my next point, less is more. Proverbs 15, 16 says, better to have little with the fear of the Lord than to have great treasure and inner turmoil. How many of you guys have a monthly budget? Raise your hand if you do. Not too many. So I'm so glad that we're doing this financial <laughs> series because we need it. Um, look up Financial Peace University. We actually do a small group in the fall. Any financial expert will tell you that you should not spend the exact amount of money you make every month. You need to have some margin. You need to live off of less than what you make. Why? Because there's always emergencies. There's always situations that come up. You know, like the, the washing machine breaks. Your dog gets sick. Can we talk about those vet bills, y'all? The other day I went to take my dog. It was like $300 bill. I'm like, take that off, take that off, take that off. Just give her the pill. She'll be fine. <laughs> like, we don't need all this. Like, they were like, well, she's going to shave her. That's $100. Shave her. I'll shave her at home. So... You, you need to make sure that you budget that way with your money, but you can also budget that way with your time because if you don't, then you're going to burn out. I wrote it this way. If we budget our money so that we don't run out, then we should budget our time so that we don't burn out. We have to decide what are the most important things in our lives. What's the mortgage in our lives and what's the Starbucks? What are the things that are the most important? I know for us, when we first started the church, I had to learn how to say no a lot. And it made me sad sometimes because when we started the church, it was just so many things. It was like 
kids' ministry, this, that. People are always coming up to me, Pastor Liz, are you going to start a women's ministry? And I'm like, no, I won't. Why? Because I need to stay in line with what God has called me to do in that season. Now I'm coming around more because my kids are older, but at the time my kids were really young. If I would have just been working, doing everything that everybody asked me to do, saying yes to everything, I would burn out. And then my family was going to suffer. So it's important that you know that you got to take care of the important stuff first. So for me, and I'm just preaching to myself, don't go buy more plants, y'all. What's, I actually posted about this the other day. More, more plants, more plants. That's me. Why? Because then you end up having to take the time to take care of them. The other day I bought a plant at Costco, huge fern, beautiful. I was like, I got a deal, $5. That thing is dying. It's so <laughs> high maintenance. You got to water. He knows. Charlie knows. You got to water that thing like every day. I'm like, ain't nobody got time for that. You got to make sure that you build your schedule in a way where you put the most important things first. Time with God. Coming to church with your family. Serving on a team. Family day. Date night. Do the most important things because otherwise you pack up your schedule with things and then you don't have time for the things that are important. And then after you fill your schedule up with those things, then you could do things like underwater basket weaving. Yeah. Pastor JJ told me about that the other day. I'm like, this is not real. I Googled it, y'all. It's a thing. People weave baskets underwater. It's so weird. <laughs> anyway, so the reason why we got to budget our time is because there's emergencies and there's always going to be interruptions, which is my next point open to interruption. We have to be open to interruptions. Many are the plans in a person's heart, Proverbs 19.21 says, many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. We all have plans in our head that we want to, of things that we want to do, but at the end of the day, we got to follow what God has for us if we really want to experience the miracles that he has for our lives. I know that Pastor JJ touched on it last week. He told the story of John and Rita and how we decided to start the church. I know we've told this story a million times, and you might be tired of it. I'm not tired of it because that's my story. I mean, we, I was at the gas station in a hurry, actually, on the way to take my kids to the doctor, and this man comes up and asking for money. What people don't know is actually my dad was with me. He's from New York, so he's real skeptical. That just means he's really skeptical. And he's like, what do you want? And I'm like, my dad is very loving. He's just, if you ask him for money, he's going he's gonna to want to know, like, all the details of why you need this money. So he starts asking him questions, and I'm like, Dad, it's okay. I got it. Stay in the car with the kids. I'll talk to him. I was able to talk to him. He told me because he was living outside of his vehicle that he needed money for gas to find a job, filled up his gas tank. And then he, he, I invited him to church. I talked to him about God. He was in tears. He accepted, well, he didn't accept Jesus in his heart at that point, actually. He was just crying. That I was talking to him about God and praying for him and that I filled up his gas tank. Told him to come to church. The church we were youth pastoring at the time. And Pastor JJ happened to be preaching that Sunday. They came to the front row, which for me, I was in tears because it was a massive church. And they didn't care. They came in the front row because they were so hungry for God. And they got saved that day. And then I remember sitting next to Pastor JJ telling him, babe, this is so crazy to see someone who had no background knowledge and then come to know God today. Like, what if we started a church that would make Jesus accessible to anyone? And that became the mission statement of our church. All of that happened because I was open to one small interruption in my day. Imagine, imagine what would have happened if that day I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't with you right now. I'm in a rush to take my kids to the doctor. Imagine how many times God has little miracles that he wants to deposit in your life. And it doesn't happen because you're too in a hurry to accept it. Imagine how many times you go to the grocery store and, the, and you're in a hurry because you're trying to get all your groceries, get home to cook for your family or whatever it is that you're doing. And there's a person at the cash register who needs hope that day and then you're just in too much in a hurry to speak to them. What about your family? What about your kids? Oh my gosh, do kids can talk, y'all. I, I read a quote, though, that basically states that if you don't listen to them when they're young, then they're not going to talk to you when they're old. Because to them, all the little things that we're talking about, well, it's always big. So we got to listen when our kids need time from us. Listen to your spouse. How many arguments would you have avoided if you would have just... Instead of being in a rush to work every day, take a moment and just speak to your spouse about whatever it is that's going on. Pastor JJ and I actually have a rule in our house. It's biblical, actually. It's in the Bible. It says don't go to sleep on your anger. And so whenever we're upset at each other, even if it's a little situation, I don't like how you looked at me. <laughs> whatever it is, we talk about it before we go to bed. And also, more importantly, how different would your relationship with God be 
if you would just take a moment, instead of being such a hurry, and just speak to him before the day started. And speaking about your relationship with God, my last point is wait on God. The worship team can come. And I don't mean wait on God, like W-A-I-T, but wait, W-E-I-G-H-T, wait on God. Matthew 11:28 says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Can we show the picture of the oxen? Yes, there. So when I was preparing for this, this Bible verse came up so many times. And I wanted to skip over it so many times because I'm like, I don't get it. This doesn't, how many, have you had, like, how many times have you read the Bible and you're like, I just don't understand it. Like, I don't get this. Yeah. So Pastor JJ actually taught me something. If there's a Bible verse that you just keep seeing and, and you don't understand, then that usually means that God wants you to study it. And so I did. I found out what a yoke was because I didn't know what a yoke was. So the yoke is that big wood piece that you see um, across both of the ox. And so when I read this Bible verse and I look at that picture, I'm like, this doesn't make sense to me. Because he's saying, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Easy and light are the last words I would use to describe that big piece of wood that's on top of these two oxen. So I kept studying it. What does yoke mean? All right, so I found out that yoke means to be submitted to whatever you're attached to. All right, submit. Well, the last time I heard the word submit in the Bible was when the Bible says submit, hus- wives submit to your husbands. Ooh. Like, I know for us wives, we hear that and we start twitching. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I can do this. And the reason why I say this is because I struggled with that so hard when we first got married, right? That was like, that was probably like the thing that we had. It took years, y'all. Like, I didn't even go through, I went through like Bible therapy because I had to like get through this. It's, it was so hard for me. I grew up in a home where my dad, he met well. I mean, he did well with me. He just taught me to be independent. I had a business before I even met Pastor Gigi. I had money in the bank. I'm like ready to buy a house. I'm just like, I don't need to listen to what anybody else has to tell me what to do, even the person I'm married to. And so I had a really hard time with it. And then I realized that the heart of the issue of why I had such a hard time with it was because I didn't trust him with the decisions for our family. And I felt like he was going to make a bad decision and then I was going to have to suffer the consequences. But then one day in reading the Bible, I felt God speak to me and say, you're looking at it all wrong and you're only looking at the first part of the Bible verse that says, wives submit to your husband. But then the second part says, and husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and died for her. And then I really thought about it and I'm like, wait a minute, why am I making this so complicated and so hard? All I have to do is submit. He has to die. And what that means is, I know, it's serious. I just gotta listen to him, he's gotta die. And when he's talking about it, it doesn't just mean die, like physically die, but die to his own selfish desires. That means, and I know he's preached about it before, that means that every decision that he makes has to, he's gotta die to his own selfish desires, and it has to keep me and his family in mind. So he can't be making all crazy decisions. Yeah, it's true. And then this verse made more sense to me because it says, for your yoke is easy and your burden is light. Sorry, I always cry every time I preach. <laughs> He's, the, re, the point I'm trying to make is that my burden was no longer hard. It was light because he had to carry the heavy weight. And some of you are here today and you're like, but I'm not married, so what does that have to do with me? Well, I'm gonna illustrate. Pastor Chaji, if you can come up with it. Y'all, our quality control team found an actual yoke. Like, can we give it up for them? This thing, I know I don't have a lot of time. This thing, you can bring it over here, is 100 years old from Columbia. What, Facebook Marketplace, y'all. That's my second favorite. Google and Facebook Marketplace. (laughs) And offer up, okay, three. Anyways, getting to the point. So the thing is that I've, I, in studying this, I realized that the reason why we hustle and we do so much and we just keep going and we don't stop and we don't rest is because the heart issue is that we don't trust God. We're not trusting God with our lives. 
And if we read this Bible verse again, it says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burden. When we hustle, 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 that's how we feel. We feel weary. And he says, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. You see, farmers, what they do is whenever there's a young ox that doesn't have a lot of experience, who has never plowed a field before, who's weak, they don't put them on the field alone. They actually pair them up with a stronger, more experienced ox that's stronger than them and who's been through the plowing the field before, who knows where the potholes are that are up along the way, who knows the right path to take. And so to illustrate here today, I'm you and Pastor JJ is Jesus because he's bigger and he's stronger. Usually the, the, the person who... The person who's preaching is uh, Jesus, but today it's going to be him because he's taller than me and bigger. So just picture this, that we're yoked to Jesus. And so what will happen is if ever we're going through a situation and we're plowing the field and we feel like we can't go on any longer, like the Bible verse says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burden, and I will give you rest. It's because he's going to pick up the weight. Whenever we feel like we can't pick it up anymore, he's going to pick up the weight. So you're here today and you're saying, I can't take this divorce any longer. I can't go on any longer. It's drawn out. We're fighting for our kids. We're fighting for our house. What do I do? He says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Whenever you feel like, I can't do this. I'm coming to church, but my family's not coming. I can't do this any longer. I'm about to fall. He picks up the weight and he says, come to me. All you are heavy and weary and burdened and I will give you rest. During COVID, I lost all my business and I can't take this any longer. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened and I will give you rest for your souls. I will give you rest. This thing is heavy. I will give you rest. My last point says, when we wait on God, God carries the weight. And if you didn't already notice, all the points I gave you spell out the word slow. So if you don't remember anything today, just remember, slow down, schedule a Sabbath, less is more, open to interruption, wait on God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you so much for today. I thank you because through my shortcomings, God, you're able to show me where I need to slow down and rest. And I can share this with others. God, I pray right now for those of us who are always hustling and we keep going. We think we're doing a good thing. I pray that today we would realize that we need to slow down. Take a moment and slow down. Spend time with our family. Spend time with you. Be open to all the interruptions that you have in our lives because that's when miracles happen. Most of the miracles that you did was through an interruption. So I just pray right now that we be open to those interruptions and that we would slow down and we would put our weight on you. And if you're here today, you can keep your head bowed and your eyes closed. If you're here today and you're saying to yourself, I don't have a relationship with this Jesus that you're talking about. And I feel like my life has been really heavy and burdened and I have no one to go to. Well, I invite you today to start a relationship with that Jesus that I'm talking about, who can pick up that heavy weight when you feel like you can't go on any longer. When you're plowing the field of life and you feel like you have nothing left to give, I'm gonna give that invite invitation to you today. So on the count of three, I'm gonna ask you to raise your right hand as a signal and as a sign to say, yes, Jesus, I want you in my life today. I wanna follow you in the path that you have for me today. And the count of three, one, two, three. Raise your hand. Amen. Amen. And I want you to repeat this prayer after me. And if you raise your hand, if you didn't raise your hand, repeat this prayer after me. Dear God, I've made mistakes in my past. And I pray today that you would accept me into your family. I yoke myself to you. I make a decision to follow you today and every day after. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Can we give it up for all those who raise their hands? 
Let's worship. Thank you so much for watching. Don't let the journey stop here. We'd love for you to do one of three things, either subscribe, share, or support. If this ministry blessed you at all, subscribe so that you can find out when the next video comes out. Share it with a friend. You never know what the people closest to you are going through. Or you can choose to support us financially, which helps bring these videos to people like you. Thank you so much for your time. God bless.